Was Iraq ready for democracy? After getting rid of Saddam, the U.S. had Iraq hold elections, after which all hell broke loose. Is it possible Iraq just wasn't ready for democracy? More broadly, are people from low-income countries in general, where life is fairly static, nothing ever changes from generation to generation, education is minimal, life choices few, are people like this ready for democracy? Is democracy that easy? Or are people from such a background so similar to people from developed countries, you know, their mindset, values, culture, that you can just slide them into democracy, no problem? Really? I wonder, does that make sense? Remember, in this video series, we've already reviewed the fact that democracy remains rare, has actually been in decline globally for about 15 years, and that, well, frankly, we haven't been very good at spreading it or even anticipating it. We pointed out that even for the relative few countries who have achieved democracy, well, it was difficult. Lastly, we noted that many would say democracy is even shaky in the world's oldest one right now. The point is, well, we have plenty of reason to question our own understanding of how democracy develops and is maintained. For 200 years, America has always had the same advice for non-democratic countries. You should hold elections as soon as possible so you too can be democratic. The problem is this approach, well, just about never works. And maybe the problem starts here. We assume people are always ready for democracy. They instinctively want it and know how to make it happen. The fact is there was abundant evidence that this simply isn't the case. We will present much evidence in this regard in other videos, but we can start here with Professor Ronald Engelhart, co-founder of the World Values Survey, a group of social scientists who've been conducting cultural surveys in more than 100 countries for 40 years. What conclusions have Professor Engelhart and his colleagues reached? Well, first, the cultural gap between traditional and advanced societies is huge, and the gap relates directly to the ability to sustain democracy. Secondly, that while elections don't change the culture, economic development does. As for me, well, the most compelling evidence is my firsthand experience living and working in China. The cultural differences are overwhelming. You see, I'm not surprised China's government leaders are authoritarian, because that's typical in China. The companies I dealt with, customers, suppliers, partners, authority was always concentrated at the top. No one else makes decisions. Followers are unempowered. They don't take initiative. It's not just at work, at school, at home. It's all the same way. The rule of law, that's another great example. Corruption, financial fraud, business fraud, IP theft, even how people drive. You see it everywhere, not just the top of government. There are many other examples. When you see this kind of behavior up close, it is obvious it would have a huge impact on society, prosperity, freedom, and democracy. Now, to be clear, the point isn't that less developed countries are like this forever. No, 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 that's not the point. The point is all countries start this way with certain cultural tendencies and that those tendencies have to change for democracy to take root and that they only change via economic development. That's the point. Cultural change is critical. So this is the first major myth of America's view of democracy, that the people are always ready for it. Actually, it takes a particular culture to support democracy, and we'll delve into how we get to that culture more in other videos. This is Dan Joseph for the Global Dashboard. Thanks for watching.